you know, for me, playing tennis is, you know, comes from the true emotion of love for the sport. When I'm on the court, I just try to focus on what's happening in the present moment on the court and how I can win the game of tennis. That's well constructed by Djokovic. And try to direct all the necessary energy into what I want to do on the court. Now Djokovic puts the volley away. I expect always uh, the most from myself, and I've been in, you know, in situations to uh, where I was raising the trophy of, of this tournament six times before. So I, you know, that gives me enough reason to believe that I can do it again. The holder of 14 Grand Slam titles, the world number one from Serbia, Novak. Djokovic! It's great to be back playing healthy and uh, I'm feeling good on my court, obviously. Uh, playing uh, Kruger for the first time, I didn't know really what to expect. I uh, tried to do my uh, homework and research on him, but uh, it's quite different playing him. And uh, as you said, it was a very competitive match. Uh, I had to really work hard and uh, we were both pumped. <laughs> Lots of emotions on the court, but uh, I guess, um, you know, I, I enjoyed the match and hopefully all, all of you guys did too. A lot of emotions and uh, trying to keep the focus and, and, and start off in the best possible way. Um, I thought I played uh, pretty well for a set and a half. I served for the second set and I, uh, he played a great game. I managed to re-break in the next game. I think that's, uh, that's something that gave me, I guess, uh, more confidence in the third. But it's always play tough playing uh, Joe. You know, he struggled with injuries in the last 12 months, but. Uh, you know, ranking doesn't do justice for him at the moment. He's, he's always been a top player in my eyes and he's got uh, plenty of experience in playing a big stage, so it was a pleasure to play against him tonight. You know, Dennis has uh, played well, as you mentioned, uh, towards the end of the third. I, mean, I uh, made some, uh, some unforced errors, got him back, uh, back in the match, and uh, he showed his quality uh, and definitely why he's uh, one of the players that we're going to see a lot in the future.
That was a match that had so many incredibly intense points, so many physical points. What was, what was the difference for you to get over the line tonight? And how are you feeling physically after that taxing encounter? <laughs> uh, since um, I guess my next opponent is watching, I'm feeling fantastic. I've never felt pressure in my life. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Um, but uh, definitely a physical battle. You know, uh, Daniel has been playing some really good tennis in the last six months. He's got a big serve, obviously backhand. You know, doesn't make any any unforced errors from that end. You know, and he defends well. He can come into the to the net. He can defend well from back of the court. Uh, just um, w was difficult to go through him. So I just had to find a different way. And um, yeah, I was fortunate, I guess, to to uh, save a couple of break points. I, I, I think I was uh, love 40 and 2-1 for him in the, in the third set. That was a crucial game, crucial hold. You know, in this kind of matches, uh, you just have to hang in there and, uh, and wait for the opportunities. battle especially against K you know we played so many matches throughout our careers we played here a couple of times in the quarterfinals semifinals I think years ago uh, you know I hope he, he can recover hope it's uh, not something that is very serious that is going to take too long um, wish him speedy recovery and uh, I'm sorry for everybody for not having a, a full match tonight but thank you for showing up You've been in the final six times. This will be your seventh. You'll be going for a record, record seventh win here, which will break a tie that you're currently in with Roger Federer and the great Roy Emerson from Australia. Well, 
But before we get to the final, I want to take you back to this time last year when you left Australia and you were on the verge of having a surgical procedure on your elbow. And I just, you're back on top, and I just want to ask you if you could have imagined one year ago that you would be standing here today where you are, number one in the world, and ready to play another final. <laughs> yes, um, but, but at the same time, uh, it was highly unlikely 12 months ago that I would be where I am today, a year later, but uh, I've said it before and I always have plenty of belief in myself and I think that the self-belief is something that always prevails and uh, there's, there's been always, there was always part of me and there still is part of me that uh, believes that I can play this way. So I think it, that's, that's the key, you know, obviously always relying on, uh, on your qualities and trusting that uh, the process will turn out the way you want it. It's wonderful. And what's wonderful for us is we get another chance to watch you and Rafa Nadal play a final here. You, you guys did that in 2012, and it was one of the best tennis matches probably ever played. It's the best match I've ever personally witnessed. And I'd love to get your recollections about that five hour and 53 minute match that you won. Well, first of all, uh, I would definitely want to buy the ticket for that match. That's cool. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> for those who haven't yet. Um, well, we have a, a slightly different rules this year uh, with the super tie break. So I don't think we'll go that far. Um, as six hours almost, but um, that's that's one of once in a lifetime experience, and uh, yeah, hopefully the outcome can be the same for me. Novak, congratulations! It's so good to see you back healthy again, and we look forward to Sunday night, ladies and gentlemen. He is the world number one. That's Novak Djokovic. Hello, and welcome to the men's final of the Australian Open two legends of the sport in the last match of the tournament seeking to add to their already impressive legacy. History on the line as Rafa tries to become the first man to win all four majors multiple times. Novak looking for a record seventh Australian Open title. Welcome to the Australian Open men's singles final. Introducing to Rod Laver Arena, the top two players in the world. The winner of 14 major championships, including the Australian Opens of 2008, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2016, from Serbia, Novak Djokovic. Under the circumstances in playing against Nadal um, in such an important match, um, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's amazing. I mean, obviously, back-to-back -back semifinals and finals to I think make 15 unforced errors in total in two matches is is quite a pleasantly surprising to myself as well. Uh, even though I I always believe I can play this way and just the one point against the serve. kind of visualize myself playing the, this way but uh, you know at this <clears throat> at this level as I said and at, you know under the circumstances it was truly a, a perfect match Three set points. Game in second sets. Djokovic. Oh my goodness.
distance once again evident for all to see. Small boy in Kopaonik, you know, this mountain resort in the south of Serbia where nobody has, you know, ever touched the tennis racket probably before me. And um, I did not have a tennis tradition in my family. So it was uh, definitely a, a, a form of sign, of de sign of destiny, you know, to, to start playing tennis and, and to um, aspire to be uh, as good as. Uh, Pete and, and to surpass him with Grand Slam title is I'm speechless. So I've been mean, obviously still haven't really had too much time to contemplate on everything that has happened, but I'm planning to do that. In the moments when you're facing adversity, uh, digging those uh, moments of you know complimenting yourself. Visualizing yourself as a, as a winner and trying to be in a positive state of mind, it's, it's much easier said than done, obviously, but I, I'm a true believer in visualization. I do that a lot and I think that I had to do that more than ever in my life uh, 12 months ago um, after the surgery because um, I wasn't playing well, I wasn't feeling good on the court. I was questioning everything, I was doubting whether I will be able to play ever on, on this level because I didn't know to what extent the operation of my elbow would affect my game. And uh, it was a huge learning curve for me, just uh, the whole process was, um, was very special and I embraced the journey and I am very grateful to go through it. I would never change anything if I could turn back the time because, you know, th things are just the way they should be. Congratulations. Uh, okay, seven Australian Opens, 15 uh, Slams. Not but too bad. Not too bad. You cannot complain. You cannot complain. 